can use the raise your hand function. We'll get to questions. Coach, go ahead. You know, one of the things that we consistently try to emphasize with our players is, you know, the mindset that it takes uh, to be a good practice player. And, you know, we kind of measure speed and explosive movement every day, whether it's in the weight room, on the practice field or whatever. Uh, and I think that's really, really important that um, it shows the players how their mindset can affect their performance. So if you go out there and perform relative to how you feel, which I would think that most football players at this point in the season don't feel perfectly well, um, but you have to have the kind of mental toughness to be able to persevere through that, uh, still push yourself to improve and get better uh, so that you can become a better player and evaluate uh, and actually um, create more value for yourself and uh, also creates value for your team. And um, so that's really, really important for us to be able to not practice how we feel not have some external factor have to be a motivator for us to feel like we need to practice and improve. And we have to get everybody on, on our team, you know, sort of bought into that concept so that we can perform well and improve uh, each and every day in terms of what we do. Um, you know, we're looking forward to um, the game this week. Uh, obviously, it's an early game on SEC Network. Uh, we still want our fans to get up bright and early and be here in Bryant-Denny Stadium and create a great atmosphere for our players. I mean, the last two games, I think the fans in the Tennessee and LSU game have had a tremendous impact on the outcome of the game in terms of how it affected our players and how it affected the team that we were playing. So um, that's something that we really appreciate and hope uh, will continue in a very positive way. You know, tomorrow's Veterans Day. Uh, and I'd like to wish and thank uh, all the, the, the veterans who have served our country, uh, made our country uh, a safe place for all of us to live uh, in one of the you know, greatest countries in the world. Um, your service is certainly appreciated, and uh, I would just like to thank you uh, for that and wish you all um, a blessed day uh, for all the things that you did and the sacrifices that you made. Uh, I know Cecil is um, struggling a little bit right now health-wise, and I just want him and his family to know our thoughts and prayers are, are with him. Uh, he's represented um, the journalistic profession in about as a professional way as anybody that I know, uh, and we certainly are hoping that he has a speedy uh, recovery. With that, we'll start with Nick Kelly. Nick, go ahead. Yeah, you mentioned earlier today about uh, competition at center. What, what kinds of things do you look at for that position when you evaluate players at, at center? Well, it's no different at center than every other position. You know, you got to do your job. Uh, you got to block the right guy. You got to be able to finish the, 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 the block. You got to uh, play the technique correctly uh, so that you have the opportunity to um, have the best chance to be successful at the position. Um, I know everybody tries. I, but, you know, you, you, the performance has got to be evaluated in a way that we're fair and honest with every player that's competing at every position. And um, if somebody can play better, then, you know, that's what, that's, that's what we have to evaluate and sort of decide and determine. Go to Michael Casagrande. <clears throat> yeah, how have you uh, seen the offensive line and the, the running backs respond this week in practice? And what's been your message to them? Well, I, I think that, you know, my message has been, you know, all those guys want to play better. Um, they're anxious to try to improve and play better. Um, and, you know, we need to do a better job with them so that they have a better opportunity to play better in terms of preparation. They have to make sure they're doing everything they can do uh, in the right way so they can do that. Um, I think they've responded well uh, for the most part. And, uh, this has got to be an opportunity for us to improve and get better. Uh, I think everybody in the organization wants to help uh, everybody on our team, you know, get better. And when you have a segment of the team who is a little frustrated with their performance, I think it's especially important to be supportive uh, and do everything that we can to help those guys, you know, play better. But they have responded well. 
Um, but I think we need to play better, you know, as an entire team. I mean, there's not any part of our team that can improve. Uh, I think, uh, you know, and that's got to be the focus for everybody on our team. Go to Charlie Potter. Hey, Coach, just sticking with the O-line and center, just how has Darian Dalcourt progressed this week with his injury? Uh, you know, he's still day-to-day. -day. Uh, I would – I can't really make a call right now, but uh, if he's not able to do some things in practice tomorrow, uh, he dressed out today. He didn't really do a whole lot. Uh, if he can do some things tomorrow, then, you know, maybe he can play in the game. But we'll have to just wait and see. Good, Aaron Suttles. What would you hope for Jaleel Billingsley's contribution going forward? And do you think the offense has missed his production recently? Um, yeah, but, I mean, when a guy has opportunities, he's got to take advantage of them. He's got to play fast. Um, can't drop the ball. Um, so, yeah, do we miss his production? Yeah, but, um, you know, when he gets the opportunities, he's got to take advantage of it and he's got to play fast. And um, he's certainly a guy that, you know, can help us in some kind of way we need him to, um, you know, sort of go out there and play like he's capable of playing. And that's certainly our responsibility as coaches to try to get him to do that. Got two more. We'll go to Tony. Yeah, you mentioned some of the young guys at center. What, what have you seen from Seth McLaughlin and uh, what does he offer at that position? Well, you know, Seth would be the next guy up. Um, so uh, he's made – a lot of improvement, plays really well. He's really smart. He's tough. He's competitive. And, you know, he, he plays with the intangibles that we're looking for at that position. We'll finish up with Sam. Sam Gordon. Hey, Nick, I know you um, touched a little bit on, on Henry's situation last week, but I was wondering if you could speak to um, who he was at during his time at Alabama and the way he, he represented the program during his tenure there. Right. Well, well, first of all, you know, we have a tremendous amount of compassion for um, all the victims, um, you know, in this tragic uh, affair, uh, the families of the people who were affected and, you know, our thoughts and prayers are with them. Um, you know, this was a little bit sort of for me, knowing Henry Ruggs as a player here who uh, never had any issues, uh, was a first class citizen. Um, was uh, a guy that did everything right. I don't think he was ever in my office once uh, for uh, having an issue or a problem, whether it was in school as a person off the field uh, or as a player. Uh, and um, so, you know, I, I hate it for him, uh, but we're also very sensitive to um, the decision that he made and the, the catastrophic consequence uh, to other folks uh, that it created and what it's going to create for him and his future as well. All right, Coach, thanks for your time. All right, thank you, guys.